Hey everybody, it's Wilbitz! We're playing Ace Attorney Apollo Justice back in the past! Very impressive, Mr. Wright. I have to say, I expected nothing less. We've only just begun. I was hoping you could tell me a bit more about what happened, actually. I did not think you would believe me if I told you. Better that you should discover the truth for yourself. I was thinking of you, you know. I think we need less thinking and more talking. That, that night in the hospital, what really happened? Ah, the way your eyes gleam, Mr. Wright. You'll scare Trucy. Speaking of which, where is she? You have seen the problem yourself. The letter. The one shot in the forehead. One, right? Yes, and the reason he speaks of. I could not deny my mentor's wishes, even if it meant my own death. Why not? This is something I will not say. For now, at least. What's this for now business? I have done many things in my life. Some well, some poorly. But this is a cross we must bear alone to our graves. We? You wanted to know about the night of the incident? Finally, this guy sure takes his time getting to the important stuff. Of course, I had no intention of shooting my mentor. I snuck into his room that night at the appointed time. And found there upon his bedside table, two pistols. Oh. Two? Yes. The one I had used on stage, and the one that had been used by my partner, Volant. Oh, for the Zack and Balance quick draw thing. My mentor had the look of one sleeping. I stood by his bedside, hearing only the light sound of his breathing. Then I took the pistol into my hand. I cannot deny that my resolve faltered then, for a moment. You faltered? You mean, you thought about shooting him? Recall there was a reason I could not refuse his request. His last such request, though not his first. So there were other requests you couldn't refuse before? Is this like some kind of magic mafia? To be honest, I've not always been steadfast, and I fear I brought pain upon Trucy. Was Magnifi coercing his disciples somehow? Just what was going on in Troop Grammary? Yet, in the end, I did not shoot him. Instead, I turned and shot the clown. <laughs> I took the pistol I had fired and placed it in my pocket. In your pocket? I believe you examine the bullet in the clown's head. You will find it to be different from the one in my mentor. The, what were those called? Rifling marks? Yes, well, that is all I have to tell you concerning the case. Concerning the case? You mean... There's something else you can tell me? <laughs> you are a fascinating man, Mr. Wright. Thanks. Yes, there is something. My mentor. His eyes opened. What? Magnifi Grammary? The old devil. He was not asleep, you see. Of course, the gunshot would have woken him anyway. And there we had our last discussion as mentor and pupil. It was not a long discussion. Maybe five, ten minutes or so. What are you talking about? Ha <laughs> Mr. Wright, did I not just tell you? It does not concern this case. Zach Grammary, he seems pretty steadfast to me, or maybe just stubborn. Mr. Wright, your presence is requested in the courtroom. Once again, I am in your hands. Right, uh, let's get back in there. Whew, whew. Who's our witness gonna be? What's going on? Because he didn't tell us anything we didn't already figure out from the evidence. Before, huh? Court is now back in session. During our recess, a bullet was found in and dug out from the clown's head. Well, the delicious news, and the rifling marks. There wasn't time to do a detailed analysis. We handed it to the bailiff so he could do his lickety-lickety, but it takes a while. So they didn't match 
find the weapon type matches the murder weapon. Hmm. Well, that's not very conclusive, is it? That's why I'm about to call my very decisive witness. Your decisive witness? How many times have I heard those words? Though they often turn out to be far less decisive than you think. Oh, don't cry on my account. I'm quite confident the witness will do the job. After all, he is intimately acquainted with the players and our little production. I bet it's gonna be Gallant. Yeah, it's gonna be Volant. Being the other half of the two Grammarie's famous duo, Zack and Volant. Volant Grammarie? So, we get to meet the great Magnapi's other disciple? Haven't changed much over the years, grew a little facial hair. Perhaps we'll start by asking your name or the occupation. Volant Grammarie, magician! Uh, and you're the decisive witness, are you? You can prove your fellow student your partner's guilt. Fate, the grand illusion filled with traps and tricks. Wait, the shooting took place in the hospital after 11 o'clock at night. If you're a witness, does that mean you were there that late? If one were to deduce this logically, the conclusion is yes. Uh, okay. I always get the characters, don't I? I have an interesting fact for you. You see, several days before the crime, my witness received this. That uh, looks very familiar. Uh, wait. That's the same letter Zach Grammary received. Yes, or perhaps I should say, ta-da! Order, order, order! And what did it say? Surely not the same thing. Perhaps you should see for yourself. Da, 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 da. Looks 11.20 p.m. Why, it's practically the same, except for the time. The court accepts this into evidence. Magnifi's letter 2, added to the court record. This is most unusual. Exactly what was going on with you folks. What exactly was your troop grammary up to? By which you mean? I'm just having trouble envisioning a man who would ask his students to kill him. Both of them, no less. It's just my opinion, Herr Judge. But from these letters, I'd say he was coercing them, not asking them. We walked the magician's path together, and in so doing, shared much of our lives. When people are so close, there is a strain, a warping of relations, you might say. Yet this has nothing to do with the case at hand. By which you mean you're not going to tell us? Which makes me wonder even more about this reason why they couldn't refuse. Well, let's get on with the testimony for starters. The defendant, Zach Grammarie, stands accused. Tell us why. Oh, I'll do more than that. For when he walks, the red roses rise, singing hymns to the miracle that is magic. Fascinating. Though, I hardly need to remind you that the evidence could just as clearly point to you as the suspect. The letter, the murder weapon, and now the two bullets found at the scene. In fact, the only difference seems to be the designated time. <laughs> As every magician knows, timing is everything. Yes. Yes, and now it's time for uh, to get this party fired up. All right. That night I visited the hospital room at the time Magnifi requested. The smell of gunpowder hung in the room and my mentor had taken his final bow. I did not imagine my fellow student might have received the same instructions. Yet a deal with the dead is still a deal. Death's sweet kiss I gave to the clown. Then I informed the doctor and the police. Hmm. So they both claim to have shot the clown, and not the forehead. Hmm, so you were the one who reported the crime? Indeed, I would think. This fact alone would clear my name of suspicion. Let's not jump to any conclusions. Yes, the cross-examination generally comes before the conclusions in this court. But, if your testimony proves to be true, then the defendant, Zach Grammarie, is guilty. And if it wasn't Zach Grammarie, 
then the killer was you, Volant. <laughs> and no disappearing act will get you out of that. Night of the crime. Let's cross-examine this mamma That night I visited the hospital room with the time magnify requested. Which, according to the letter, was 11.20 p.m.? Indeed. In magic timing is everything. Right. Consider the illusion of teleportation. If I were to appear on stage before my stunt devil has left, how would that look? You can't tell us how that's done. Come on, follow your own code. Why, it would reveal the very secrets of my magic. Now that you've revealed the very secrets of your magic for all of us, uh, let's move on. You went at the designated time, and uh, what did you see? The smell of gunpowder hung in the room, and my mentor had taken his final bow. Hold it. So, you weren't worried for your own safety at all? I mean, you smelled gunpowder, yes? What if the shooter was still nearby? I... I did not consider this, to be honest. It is forbidden for a magician to have a good imagination. Uh, really? Isn't magic entirely about illusions and imagination? How about this? You were the shooter, which is why you weren't afraid. <laughs> now you are the one imagining! It is forbidden for a lawyer to have a good imagination. Do we need to refrain from pausing so suspiciously before responding? My forbidden imagination is starting to imagine things not entirely related to this case. I did not imagine my fellow student might have received the same instructions. Which brings us back to this reason neither of you could refuse. So it does, and my partner, he did not refuse. But Magnapi wrote the same thing to you. Why could you refuse if Zack couldn't? Because I have a will of steel, of course. Or bits of it. I also do this trick where I bend steel bars, so perhaps steel isn't all so strong. So which is it? Ah! Mind if I continue? Yet a deal with the dead is still a deal. Death's sweet kiss. I gave to the clown. There were two bullet holes in the scene. One in the victim and one in the clown. You're saying the one who shot the clown was you? No doubt my partner Zack has said much the same thing. Yeah, because whoever didn't shoot the clown committed murder. I better dig around here a bit more and see what I turn up. Mr. Ballant, let me ask you about something else concerning the crime scene. Namely, the bullet in the pistol, the location of the pistol, the number of pistols. How many pistols were there when you entered the room? By which you mean what precisely? The two pistols were used in the Zack and Milan quick draw shoot -em, correct? One for each of you. You are well informed, yet only one of my old friends sat in the hospital room that night. What did Zack tell me back in the lobby? Of course, I had no intention of shooting my mentor. I snuck into his room that night at the appointed time, and found there upon his bedside table two pistols. I took the pistol I had fired and placed it in my pocket. Hmm, I see no problem with that statement. Only one pistol is still visible in the photograph of the crime scene, after all. So you picked up that pistol and fired it? Indeed I did. Alakazam! Alakazing! Alakaboom! So the rifling marks alone should put this guy away. Hmm. Is the number of pistols really so important? Quite important. The number of pistols is quite important, Your Honor. Very well. Please add this detail to your testimony. What can I do but obey? Only one pistol was in the hospital room that night. With it, I shot the clown. Let's press that. 
Just get through all our pressing. So you took the only pistol there and fired it. That's correct. And that pistol was this one, which was left at the crime scene. Good show, I see you too are a magician of sorts. And you're an idiot of sorts. Do you have any idea what you just said? I see the fire in your eyes as you glance the weakness. So how about heating up this tile a bit? These slow balance bore me. Uh, I've got a hunch, but maybe that's all it is. Maybe I should ask about something else? In order to shoot a pistol, you need a bullet. Where was the bullet? I entered the room and took the pistol in my hand. The bullet was already loaded, ready to fire at any time. A magician is always prepared, you see. Prepared for... One never knows when a miracle will be called for. A magician always has seven doves in his pocket and a white rabbit up each sleeve. Clearly, Kratim is professional, sir. Hmm. Is this bullet that was loaded in the pistol really so important? Yes, because the rifling rifle... Without a loaded bullet, we wouldn't have a murder. It's very important, Your Honor. Very well. Please add the detail to your testimony. What can I do but obey? So we need to find the right thing to present evidence to. The pieces were already loaded. I merely had to pull the trigger. Rifling. Oh, 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 oh. The rifling matches the bullet in... But is it the number of guns that matter, or the bullet that was in there? Man. This is tricky. I feel like I know the right kind of thing, but not exactly what the game wants at this point. Let's press that as well. Just see what else we get. If the pistol was already loaded, something doesn't make sense. Why weren't the victim's fingerprints on it? You should know that we of the true Gremory are capable of many things. One of these being the levitation of iron balls without touching them. We're magnetic! There's no magic involved here, so Suto was just methodical is all. He simply wiped everything of fingerprints. Can't really do much with fingerprints that weren't there. Maybe I should ask about something else. Let's get all of the things. Let's get, let's get all the data so we can make a, the most informed decision. Where exactly was the pistol when you entered the room? On top of a small bedside table it was. As if to say, here I am, take me into your hand, pull my trigger, shoot him. The victim clearly wanted to be shot. But why? Perhaps he wanted to go out, meet a bang. Yet we will never hear the truth from his lips, so all we can do is guess. Hmm. Is the location of the pistol all that important? No, it is not. Actually, let me ask about something else. Very well. The witness may continue with the testimony. What can I do but obey? Let's get the last thing that we haven't asked about, about the doctor and the police. So you inform the police. What did you do then? What do you suppose I did? Use my magic to levitate my mentor's corpse, perhaps? I don't know, that's why I'm asking. Now please answer the question and skip the sarcasm. After I made my report, I called the doctor and we returned to the room. While we waited for the police to arrive, we discussed stomach medicine. We've confirmed this with the doctor. It all checks out. Even the stomach medicine stuff. Ooh, didn't have the stomach for murder. He praised Mr. Ballon's knowledge of stomach medicine, in fact. Ah, it is an honor I do not deserve, but I accept. Both the Magna students received the same letter. Both admit to having gone to the hospital that night. Two bullets were fired, and one of them killed Magna Time to find the cracks in his testimony. Alright, visit the hospital room the time you requested. Smell of gunpowder. 
ask you the same questions. The pistol was already loaded. I'm going to pull the trigger. I think we need to change this into the number of guns question. So... Let's go to the number of pistols. Yeah, yeah. This is really, this is the important one because they give us a big flashback to make a... All right, so this is the one that's actually really important. So we add this to the testimony. And then we are going to present that the rifling does not go into the clown and matches the victim. According to the defendant, Zach Ramory, when he entered the room, there were two pistols on that table. Two? One of those pistols he used to shoot the clown in the forehead. Then he left with it in his pocket. Of course this is what he would say. Unlike the hapless clown, we must assume our defendant has some brains in his head. Well, what about what Mr. Volandis told us? You see, there's something about his testimony that doesn't make sense. What might that be? I told you I took the pistol that was there and shot the clown. That's your story, at least. What? Huh? But the rifling marks tell a very different story, Mr. Volant. Recall what Prosecutor Gavin told us. We compared the bullet taken from the victim's skull with the bullet fired from this gun. The rifling marks on the bullets were a perfect match. Huh? Mr. Vallant, if you fired this pistol, then you shot the victim in the forehead! Order, order, order! Well, this is all rather sudden. <laughs> Much what have I done? P Prosecutor Gavin, I owe the court an apology. Sorry. Uh, sorry for what? You see, I was unaware that two of these unique pistols were crafted. The analysis of rifling marks only proves the type of guns that fired them. That's not how rifling works. But, but that's not what you told us before. You said you'd verified the murder weapon. Which is why I'm apologizing to you now. Quite sincerely, I might add. Would you hold me accountable for a mistake made in my youth? That was just this morning. I am still young. And I might add, it wasn't really my fault. If the defendant had only admitted he took one pistol from the scene of the crime, we would not be having this pleasant discussion now. Ugh. Hmm. Madame Gramary? Yes, Your Honor. You were presented to this court as a decisive witness. But you've proven to be a more divisive than decisive. Objection! You'll see in time. You'll see in time. What? Huh? The testimony so far has merely been a review of the facts. The proof comes next. Care to elaborate, Prosecutor Gavin? When Mr. Vallant entered the hospital room, the victim had already been shot. As his next testimony will prove, Herr Wright, the real fight is about to begin. Bring it. Very well, the witness will now testify to the court. Help us determine who shot what. 